Hi everybody, Suol Pozel here. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to some of the basic color and texture workflows we can utilize using Autodesk NetFab. Here I have two parts, one's named Bunny and the other one is the Frustum of Pyramid. Uh, we will start uh, showcasing this functionality using the Bunny part. So let's go ahead and turn off the second part. And the second part is now turned off and we are left with part one. And what I will do is I will hide the colors and textures as imported by this STL. So here we have a generic looking object and we, we can turn on the, um, the edges and the highlight the triangles, control E and control G. So let's go ahead and turn off the edges. We don't need the edges, we'll the, just the triangles. Here we go. Um, what I wanna do is show you how to get rid of the colors and textures that we imported and create our own colors and textures onto these parts. To do that, I have to select the object, I have to go to modify, and I have to go to texture and color within the enhance panel. When I go in there, I can select the object and remove all the colors and textures. And this is a non-reversible action. We can hit yes and continue. And now we've basically eliminated the colors associated with this object. I can hit apply changes, remove the old parts, yes. And as you can see, I've done a color change to this. So I see the color in the name of the file. When I turn on and off, the color of the object, I can see the pastel color, with, uh, which represents just a, a unique color for each body, but it's not the color of the object. And this is the color information and texture information visible. And since this has no color information, it is this white looking image. But what if I wanted to add some colors and print this object in color? In that case, I, I would go back into the same color and texture area and choose individual triangles uh, and color them. So you can change which color you want the object to be or which triangles to be. So let's go ahead and choose maybe some sort of green here. Hit OK. I can choose individual triangles and paint them. So I can do it this way using manual uh, manipulation. It may be helpful to turn on the triangle visualization again. And here you can see I've highlighted a couple of these triangles and am painting them. This could be a cumbersome task if I have large areas. So another option we have is using a brush. And here we get a circular brush and the radius of this brush could be adjusted. So I, have, I was using a large radius earlier, so I can reduce it to something a little more reasonable. And using this method, I can do quick brushes. So instead of selecting single triangles, I can select collection of triangles this way. I can of course mix and match colors as well. So if I wanted to change my brush color to red over here, I can do red over here. And now we've made some slight changes to the color of this object. I can say apply changes, remove the old part, sure. And now we've done a secondary color operation to this object and as you can see, I have the, um, the red back and the green object on this object. Now I can do so much more. Let's get back into the selection of the part, get into the color and texture again. Uh, I can read colors from triangle. So if I had a 3MF file or an OBJ file, I imported with color, I can pick the color from an individual triangle and then project it onto other surfaces. Uh, if this was multiple shells, I could also paint on shells. So this whole thing is one shell. So if I did that and choose maybe, you know, a bluish color. So now this entire shell is blue. Um, these are some of the basic things we can do with colors. Uh, we can also go and create face groups. Um, what we can do is if we have a certain sections colored up, we can turn those things into face groups. So I could say 
brush. Let's go and choose a different color here. So here, for example, orange, hit OK. So let's say this zone. So I have a color right there. I can say color to face group, and I have two zones created. And using these face groups, I can do other things in NetFab. Uh, I can select these face groups and apply things like support structures, for example. All right, so we played with colors and uh, creation of face groups based on colors. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about textures. Uh, to do textures, I'm going to use my second object. Let's hit cancel, delete this bunny altogether, and focus on the first part. So here's my first part. And uh, it's got some curved surfaces and it's got some flat surfaces, and that's why I chose this geometry. Here, we're going to, once again, select the object, go to Modify, go to Color and Texture. And in this case, we're going to show you how to do textures. So what I want to do is show you how to do a project texture. Um, we get this uh, green 4x4 grid. And when we look at the object from different angles, we can modify which um, triangles it's snapping onto. The top surface is flat, so regardless of where the blue dot is on the screen, the plane is the same. But if I come over here, as I, as I move around the object, you can see the plane is going normal to the triangle that I'm hovering over. To make life easy, we'll just choose this top surface. And what I will also do is make it a little bit smaller so we can see impacts of different sizes. So I've manipulated where the texture should be applied to, the position. Next, I have to choose um, what I want to apply. So here we are going to go to um, the texture projection and choose our texture file. So let's choose a file. I've created a folder here full of textures. So we'll choose a basic one. Uh, let's go with this one right here. It is a black and white image. When I hit open, we get a preview. We can modify it, make it bigger, smaller, rotate it. And uh, when we're ready, we say project. And now that texture has been projected onto this part as a part of the texture and color tab here. When I say apply changes, I can remove the old part and I have a new version of it. If I click on the light bulb on this uh, color wheel, it hides the colors and textures as you can see and shows you this pastel image. When I turn on the colors and textures, I get to see the, the colors and the textures associated with that object. If I once again print this using a um, color printer, I'll get uh, this representation. You can also tell that the mesh has been altered slightly on this top surface to get a absolute size for the color and texture. Um, let's go ahead and add that same part, but do two different things. So I'll go to my part library and add one of those um, rust among codes, create the part. There we go. We will select the object and add the same texture. So I am adding the texture to this surface. And we'll make it slightly smaller again. But this time, we will use maybe a different one. And what I do want to show this time is um, texturing not just the triangles that I'm selecting, but all the way to the backside as well. And what this will do is it will project it onto this region. So let's go ahead and hit project. And there you go. We have the texture on this surface and we have it on this surface. Uh, next, what I want to show you is how to benefit from um, those textures. So let's go ahead and select the object and add the texture one more time. So here we will choose project texture over here again. Maybe we'll wrap it around these uh, curves as well by keep keeping it large. 
and hit project. So now you can kind of see that it's projected it and curved it. And uh, once we have the texture applied to the object, it shows up in the texture uh, field right here. Um, what I can do in addition to adding the texture is I can extrude the texture information. So if I go to extrude texture, I can choose how much I want to extrude. So let's say any uh, object that is colored with the texture in black color should move in the positive direction, uh, let's say three millimeters. And white could be negative three millimeters or zero or a positive number. Uh, refine edge gives me a, um, basically this is the resolution uh, from no, no change to the change zone. So uh, the, the smaller this number is, the you know, more uh, triangles you will end up with, uh, but a better looking accuracy you will get. And the other part is you can change the mesh on the entire part or just the zone that you've added the texture. And here I've chosen to extrude the texture. If I wanted to do that for the color, I could do that as well. So here we're just going to go with the texture. When I hit uh, OK, this will remesh the geometry and I will apply this to the part. I'll remove the old part. And uh, everything looks rather black here because we have the triangles highlighted. So if I turn that off, you can get a better sense of what kind of uh, change we get in this geometry. So here, if I zoom in, you can see that the slight bump over here and the slight bump over here. Like I mentioned, if you change that the um, the accuracy number from one millimeter and reduce it maybe down to 0.5 or 0.25, you'll get a smoother transition in this uh, zone. Of course, you could use further uh, mesh manipulation tools and smooth this as well. Um, thank you for watching. And in this video, we talked about how to add colors and how to add textures and how to use that information to uh, use uh, extrusion operations uh, for textures and colors to create uh, geometry changes in our models.